Beautiful, beautiful. Valerie Mackey, everyone. Beautiful. Thank you, Val. That was just wonderful. So here's the question. Do you have the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to live by your spiritual power? No hesitation. Love that. She wins the prize. But it's really true. I mean, this is the question that is before us as spiritual beings, is it not? Do you have the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to live in and through your spiritual power? You know, already this morning we've been hearing about the 12 powers, the spiritual powers that live and move through us. And sometimes we think of them as this abstract thing out there. Do you know what that is? You know, it's like this notion, this idea that's a really good idea, but it's out there. And it's the same thing that we do with our God. We expect God to be that power as LK was speaking about in his prayer. We talk to this power out there sometimes out of our human need and we want the God out up somewhere there to be the source of our good. And so today, today if we're going to live in our spiritual power, those divine innate powers that live and move and can have their expression in us, then we've got to claim them. And so I'm very, very excited to talk to you about the 12 powers, and we'll be talking about four every week. And I have to tell you that learning about the 12 powers in unity is part of what excited me over 20 years ago. I was so thrilled to realize there was more to me than just me. Have you ever felt that way about yourself? If you've ever lived in that question, is this it? You kind of go, ah, oh, really? But when we realize that there is so much more to us that is far beyond our humanity, that there is a power and a strength, there is a truth and a wisdom, there is love, there is knowledge, and there is peace beyond just this then we have something that inspires us to live in a far greater way. So one of the ways that I like to think about it is this way. I like to think about one of my very favorite characters, and maybe he's one of yours as well. I like to think about none other than Superman. You know, when I was a kid, and I'm that old, but I used to go home from school, and I would watch Superman on TV, and i think about that great big ass and that cape, and I loved watching Superman. I identified, as most of us did, with Clark Kent. Did you identify with Clark Kent? You know, really nice guy, kind of timid, a little overwhelmed, but really a nice guy. I identified even as a kid, and I kind of grew up to be Clark Kent for many, many years, but I identified with his persona. But the magic was not in being Clark Kent. The magic was transforming into Superman. When Clark Kent disappeared, and oftentimes he'd go in another room or he'd go somewhere magical. He'd come out and Superman would show up. And you know, it's interesting because there's a metaphor here for us as spiritual beings. We show up as this, our small selves. But when we go inside, when we move inside, something happens. And we come forward with our spiritual power that far exceeds anything we could be on our own. Anything. And I think that's why we cheered for Superman as he'd fly through the air. And I don't remember the rest. But all the things that he did, and faster than a this and a that and a that. 
And you know it, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyway, we identified with that because that's who we are. We are more than what we appear to be. And so I want you to do something. I want you to take your finger and draw a big S on your chest. Come on. I'm watching you. Yeah. Draw that big S on your chest and claim your superpowers. Claim the truth of who and what you are. There's a wonderful little book that I picked up over 20 years ago, and it's written by Winifred Wilkinson Houseman, and it's called Your God-Given Potential. And Winifred wrote this book about the 12 powers in unity. And one of the things that she said was spiritual power. Spiritual power is not an end in itself. It's not a goal to be sought. Instead, it is a means that enables us to attain the end, and that is to bring more God ideas to earth. When we live in our spiritual power, we bring forward the goal of being human and divine. We are in human form, but we bring forward God ideas on earth, and it begins with us. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, in 1930, he wrote this little book called The Twelve Powers of Man. How many of you have read The Twelve Powers? Good. Well, I suggest you read it again. And for those of you that haven't read it, I encourage you to find it. You can find it online as well. But it's a wonderful book where Charles Fillmore came up with the idea that all of the powers exemplified by our way shower, Jesus the Christ, were found in the 12 powers that live in each and every one of us. I'm inspired by that. I think about Jesus the man that came from Galilee. And he was born just like you and me. And yet he lived from that S within him, that super divine power within him. And he mastered, he mastered all of these powers. So they came forward to be a true blessing to the earth. And we are told that if he can do it, so can we, in our own way, right here and right now. So let's talk about these 12 powers and what they are. And we have a, we have a shot, and I want us to read them aloud, but don't just say them. Speak them as truth that lives in you. And so we'll do them line by line and speak them as, yes, this power lives in me. Together, the first line, faith, strength, wisdom, love, power, imagination, understanding, will, order, zeal, release, life. And a hush moves over the room when we stand in our power. When you look at these 12 powers, can you see the one that you most resonate with? Can you see the ones that naturally come forward in you out of desire, without hesitation, and you identify with them because they are the ways that your true nature has come forward best so far? So when you look at them, do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as faith? And have you moved in faith beyond your ordinary thinking? Or have you seen yourself as will, where you surrender your human will, the part of us that has a lot of personal agendas and the part of us that decides that we know best not only for ourselves but for everyone, have you surrendered that part? And do you love that joy of surrendering your will to God? I love that. 
I love that. And do you have the ability to live in divine order? Have you opened up that potential in you so that you see that all things, truly, all things, bar none, all things work together for good? And perhaps because it is the new year, perhaps you live in life where you come forward as a Christ-blessed being. And no matter where you are, no matter where you've been in your life, even a minute ago, today you claim new life as a blessed being, the beloved of God. Do you see how these powers work? When we hold a consciousness of them within us, we are transformed. It is sad that all of us are transformed by our thinking. But it only happens if we are willing. And so today, let us be willing. Let us open up in a new way to truly living all these 12 powers. And let's make 2017 the year that truly makes a difference in each of us. Are you willing to do that? Yeah. We're ready. So let's begin with the first four. That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's talk about faith. Let's talk about strength. Let's talk about wisdom. And let's talk about love. So the way that I'm going to speak of them today is I'm going to begin by using the affirmations that I use during our Christmas Eve candle lighting service. Because each and every power has a number of ways that it shows up in our life. It is not limited to only one definition. But I'm going to use those affirmations so we can move more fully into them. And so faith is trusting in God and knowing that all is truly well. For God's presence prevails in our lives. Faith is really about trusting in God and knowing all is well. And really, honestly, knowing that God's presence can and will prevail in our life if we allow it. And so I think about faith this way, and a lot of times I am drawn to the power of faith when my knees are shaking. You know that feeling? And I used to always ask to have more faith because I thought that's where I want to live. But then when your knees are shaking and they don't stop shaking, then you want to live in faith and know that it's not about me and it's not about my faith because I see how things are going to be and because they happen in my time. But faith is knowing that God's presence is here always, no matter what I see, no matter what's happening, no matter what is going on. God's presence is right here, and I allow it to prevail in my life. It's a mighty place to be. Because when we stand in faith, that very foundation... No one and no thing can ever harm us, and no one and no thing can ever take our power from us. Our faith is grounded in God. And that is living in faith. Now, when we move to strength, we say, with God as my source, I can do all things. For God is always finds a way. We just sang a song this morning that God is my source. And sometimes we need to draw on God as our source. God is our strength through which we can do any and all things. Have you ever had a hard time? You know, have you ever had a hard time? Have you ever raised a teenager? Right? Okay, so you get it. Or a three-year-old granddaughter. So God is my strength, and through God I can do all 
things for God's strength in me always finds a way you know one of the things about being on the spiritual path is that we earn what I call spiritual stripes you know those stripes on the sleeve we earn those stripes when we go beyond ourselves and we call on God to give us what we cannot give ourselves. Because sometimes we turn around and we look to other people to be our strength, to be our guidance, to be our direction, and sometimes they're not even there and the power of God in them is not available to us. And so we have to turn within and in faith know that God is my strength and God will find a way if I just hold on if I just persevere in faith I will find a way to be strong and so if you're going through a challenge today if you're going through a healing today if you're going through a time of uncertainty today God is your strength and God will find a way let's move to wisdom I live from a deeper knowing God's wisdom brings peace to my mind I am so grateful for wisdom aren't you because sometimes I think I am so darn smart I can hardly stand myself you know, sometimes I think I just know almost everything. And I love those places where I know nothing. I love those places where I have to call on God's wisdom to bring me peace because everything I've thought, everything I've tried, everything I've figured out is circular. And it just brings me back to where I started. And so I open to the power of God's wisdom. And when I allow that presence of God to open my mind and soften my heart, a way of truth and peace begins to unfold in my life, and I find a way that could not be seen. I like to tell this little story because it's one of the greatest ways that wisdom was exemplified to me and has now begun to live in me. When I was 19, I worked in a chemical dependency unit, an alcohol treatment program for a 28-day program. And my mom had made a mistake. And I came to work, and I was so upset. I was so mad. And I just thought, what a terrible thing she has done. How could she possibly, in any good conscience, do this terrible thing? Of course, I really didn't know what she had done, but I assumed I had known. But I was really disturbed. And my mentor took me aside and he goes, Myra, something's troubling you today. What's going on? And I said, well, since you asked, I'm going to tell you. And I outlaid this situation that had happened, and I was so upset. And I was convinced, I mean, totally, totally convinced that he was going to say, oh, how terrible. How could your mother, your mother, do this? And do you know what he did? He came out from behind his desk, stepped out, he took me by the hand, and he said, your mother must have been terribly lonely, and this must have been a hard thing for her. And he had tears in his eyes, and I will never, forget that moment first because I was irritated with him <laughs> supposed to be on my side you're my mentor but then I was overwhelmed by the wisdom of his words and the love in his heart and I began to rest in those words and I began to step out of my human knowing my human understanding and I began to see my mother in a deeper way. 
and I felt the power of God's wisdom open my heart to love and open to my mind to peace. And so that is indeed the power of wisdom. And so we allow God's wisdom to fill us into a deeper knowing that brings peace into our being. And now let's talk about the big one. Let's talk about love. And what I'd like to have you think about when we talk about love today is just this one aspect, and it is this. I am a channel of God's great care and compassion. I love all people, including myself, with an open heart. I am a channel of God's great care and compassion. I love all people, including myself, with an open heart. This is sometimes the hardest one for all of us. There are times when we just really need to open ourselves to receive God's love and care. And we want it to come in a certain way or we want it to show up and move through us in a tangible way. But when we turn within, we can find God's love and care in the most tender space within our being. It's right there and it's personal and it's real. It's gentle and yet strong. And when we open to compassion, something that sometimes we're so good at giving others and we're so stingy about giving to ourselves, this is our great work. It is to truly live in love. And so we live in love by allowing that power to be open in us. We don't have to know exactly how. We don't have to even have a reason. We just need to have a willingness to allow God's love and care to fill us with compassion. And we allow it to come from inside. And through us, we love ourselves and we love all others. And so every time we have an unloving thought, a hateful thought toward ourselves or toward another person, instead, we choose love. And so I invite you to hold all of these powers in your heart, faith, strength, wisdom, and love. And allow yourself to simply feel their presence now as we begin to ask the question, how can these powers be magnified in us today? You know, each of us, each of us is meant to live from the Lord God of our being. And each of these beautiful, magnificent powers are meant to pour out of us and they are meant to be magnified within us. All of us have that S on our chest where we can truly live these powers. And so we need not reach out for God out here to do God's work. All we need to do is reach inside. And we can find God. God is right here. In fact, God is nearer than the air.